Hi, I'm Rachel Kramer Bussell. I'm the editor of Best Sex Writing 2009. I'm here to check out the Booksmith's sex books. The sex section is always the first section I go to, and I'm very excited to see my books. That is what I always check first. If you are at all an aspiring erotica writer, you should get this book. People think that if they put dirty words in, then that's all they have to do, or they just write the sex scene and there's no backstory. Like, I have no idea who the people are, or why they're having sex, or what's going on. Violet Blue has a lot of anthologies out, and they're all really amazing. The G-Spot one, I think, is really awesome. I've given that to people as a gift who didn't think the G-Spot existed. Um, okay, I don't, I feel kind of weird saying this word, but this is called Fucking Daphne. Fascinating book. Daphne Gottlieb edited a book about people having sex with her. I really like stories that surprise you, like where you think it's going to go in one direction and then something totally different happens. Like I've edited three books and I have a fourth coming out all about spanking and people are like, isn't that enough, spanking? <laughs> but people manage to do new things with it. I just happened to be passing the San Francisco section and my friend Rachel Sarah told me about this book by Kemble Scott, Soma, and there's supposed to be a lot of sex in it and that's enough of a recommendation for me. This book, Love Junkie, is really good, but I definitely wouldn't give it to someone for a Valentine's Day present. This book, it's kind of crazy. It's the book that was, the fictional book that was in the Sex and City movie. And then because so many people were asking about it, they made it into a real book. I think it's really cool that you guys have chocolate here. I think if someone gave me chocolate for Valentine's Day, or for any time, even though it's kind of cliched, I think that'd be fine. I mean, it'd be awesome. Oh, this just came out from Susie Bright, and it's really beautiful. I don't think you could sit there and read the whole thing at once. You'd kind of explode. This is a really great one, and there's a piece by Julie Powell, who did Julie and Julia, the food blog. The first line says, you like that, don't you, bitch? And then it says, when I first learned about the story of Ptolemy's spheres in junior high, I thought it was one of the saddest things I'd ever heard, in science class, anyway. Anais Nin is one of the people that I've never read, and that whenever I tell people that, they kind of are like, really? That's terrible. This is the kind of thing I would look at over and over. It's like all these old school lingerie ads, sexy, but not totally pornographic. I, I teach erotica workshops. I could say, you know, write a story about this photo or the woman in this photo. I don't think sex is only in the sex section. And I just read this book, Edition, by Toni Jordan. It's about OCD, and it's really fascinating to see how she treats sex. Josh Kilmer Purcell wrote this novel called Candy Everybody Wants. If you like the 80s sitcoms, soap operas, or gay people, I definitely recommend this book. I see Tucker Max's I Hope They Serve Beer in Hell. It's not horrible, but I wish there were guys writing about sex in a little less macho of a way. But this book, Swish, by Joel Durfner, it's his quest to become the gayest person ever. It's totally hilarious, but it's also really, really smart. Like, he's kind of scary smart. I think the booksmith is very sexy. A, you have a sex section. A lot of places, it's like buried in some other section. And I think you have some books that people should have, and then you also have indie books, books that aren't everywhere. I will definitely be back here next time I'm in San Francisco.